I do apologize for this video taking so long, but I'm big on creating videos only after I've used the equipment that we're talking about in the video. I don't like being a spec sheet for you. I like giving you tangible, real world information. And finally, at WPPI this year in Las Vegas, I was able to get my hands on the new Canon EOS R8. I actually used the camera to do one of my budget photography gear shootouts, so make sure that you look for that here on the channel as well. And I used it while photographing a friend of mine's daughter who's absolutely gorgeous and inside the Canon booth for WPBI. Now admittedly I had some very ideal circumstances. It wasn't exactly real world bringing it on a paid job but I only got to use it for that short amount of time all the 15 minutes so just take my experience with a grain of salt knowing that. And also I am a Canon Explorer of Light. I've been using Canon my entire photography career like 24 years so naturally I'm gonna love the equipment but more so I'm gonna be really familiar with it off the bat. So if you don't know the specs about the Canon EOS R8, here are some of the things that you need to know about this camera. And I have to read them because quite frankly, I just don't know. Now, one of the weird things off the bat about the EOS R8 is the fact that it's a full frame sensor, while the R7 is a crop sensor. And that's a little bit weird to me because typically the way that the Canon lineup goes is the higher the number, the higher quality of the camera. So for example, the R3 is like the top of the line for the mirrorless, then the R5, R6, R6 Mark II, maybe that one's first because that's a little bit more recent. And then going on from there with the R10 being more towards the bottom of the line and the R50, which we'll talk about in another video being even below that. So it's a little bit strange. And if you're familiar with the Canon lineup and how they name things, it might disrupt your thinking. Hey, can you stop right there and I can tell you just a little secret? I have something called Photo Insiders that you might want to be a part of. Photo Insiders is a master educational community for photographers where you will learn the ins and outs of things like posing, lighting, flash, continuous lighting, and a mix of all of them. With new educational videos every single month, behind the scenes, and all location shoots with real clients, not models. This is just fun stuff. Watch how I troubleshoot my way out of situations. Did that flash? See my camera settings and see my images raw as they come out of the camera. Exclusive content that you will not see anywhere else. High speed sync allows you to raise You could watch a million YouTube videos and still not get your questions answered. But within the community of photo insiders, you'll be able to ask your questions that I will answer in live group coaching calls. Never feel lost or frustrated behind the camera again, but instead confidently create the photos that you envision every single time. Inside the community, you can also talk shop and collaborate with other photographers. So you can not only elevate your craft together, but boost your marketing and overall business too. You'll have access to all of my bonus materials, things like contracts and my email templates that are sure to put money in the bank. I wish I had something like this 20 years ago when I first started learning photography. Join my exclusive community at Photo Insiders and learn alongside a group of creatives that are going to help you elevate your craft. See you there. Anyway, the Canon EOS R8 is a full frame 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor. It has dual pixel CMOS AF2 uncropped 4K movie at up to 60 FPS that's oversampled from 6K. You've got a max record time of two hours. The EVF has 2.36 million dots. And of course that very angled touchscreen that's really helpful for getting different angles. Now this camera goes for $14.99, which is a little bit higher. So it's not the lowest on the price totem pole of Canon mirrorless cameras, but it's not also, you know, the R5 or the R3. The camera has one SD card slot and of course takes the RF line of lenses or using a $99 adapter, you can use any of the EF mount lenses and third party lenses as well. I know that's a big thing with you guys. Canon does have cheaper RF lenses. Some of my favorites being the RF 50 millimeter 1.8, which is under 200. And I do also like the 85 F2 as the less expensive version than the 85 1.2, but I get it. Sometimes you have different brand lenses that you want to use, a different budget, you can just use that $99 adapter that's going from EF to RF and use anything you'd like.
All right, let's take a quick second to pull in some of the raw files from the R8. So these first three, these are Roberto Valenzuela's. He is a phenomenal photographer. Absolutely amazing. Definitely intimidated photographing next to him, that is for sure. And the rest here are mine. So just good examples of uh, the shadows in here. And I always like to kind of pull these in uh, to see what kind of noise I have. Now I was shooting at 1600. Yep, so this is a pretty good example. Let's just kind of zoom in to the pitch black. All right, and see, you know, what we've got here as far as the noise levels on 1600, you know, in the dark, in the shadows here. So those are them. Let's uh, just go into noise reduction just to see. Okay, not not horrible. You know, that's something just, you know, with a lower price camera, it's not gonna have the noise reduction of like, or handle the noise of like, you know, the R5 or the R3. So it's just something really important to look at, I think, when we're, we're taking a look at a camera. So. Let's go ahead and edit some of these to my liking. I am using my own editing stuff here. Ooh, Joy Me Pretty. Yeah, I like that. You can find these presets, Joy Volume 1 and Joy Volume 2, on my website, breatheyourpassion.com. Oh, this needs black and white. Oh, yeah, you know, but I need the faded. Pudgy, you know, faded for sure. Let's do a little bit of adjusting. Awesome. And then I want to do one of these. Yeah, okay, this is a good example of the eye focus. So let's let's take a good look at these so here we go so this again looking at all of our settings this is at 3200 oh wow i didn't realize that was this high naughty me well i mean not so much because i was using a lens and i was zoomed all the way in so we're at 63 on the variable aperture lens that i was using here and it's one one hundredth of a second so i have to say for 3200 that's a pretty darn crisp image i'm not mad about that at 3200 definitely some cleaning up i would want to do let's just do a quick oh I feel like that kind of did it like right there, right? Yeah, let's just do that. Maybe we'll warm it up ever so slightly right around there and then do a little bit of sharpening. That's my joyful Stuart. You can uh, probably guess I, I named some of these after some people. Uh, let's see, a little bit of noise reduction, not a ton. I do like to do sharpening right about there. And honestly, if I'm be super honest with you, I would probably, if I wanted to bring this into something like Luminar Neo, um, or Evoto and do some like magic sharp and things like that. But yeah, not mad about that. Out of camera, edit, out of camera, edit. So just thought you could uh, take a look at some of these photos. Oh yeah, this needs a punchy black and white. Yep, it does. Oh, let's zoom it out. There it is. That's Roberto's. Love that one. You know what? This one, I bet you, yeah. I have this Joy Vintage preset that I really like. Hold on, we gotta pull down these highlights a little. Oh, that's another thing to look at. So we got some pretty blown out highlights, sorry Roberto, but we do. Um, <laughs> we wanna just see what it looks like pulling those back from the raw file. Yeah, it's all there. It's all there, okay. Good to see, good to know. Hope that's helpful for you. Uh, let's just pull up those favorite photos I quickly edited. Not too bad, not too shabby. One of the big topics that everyone's talking about the R8 is the autofocus system and how great it is. Now, I've used a lot of the Canon cameras and once we hit that mirrorless line, the focusing system is just incredible. I mean, the R and the RP were good, but then once we got the R5 and the R6, autofocus just went from really good to absolutely incredible and not even having to think about it anymore. While I was using the R8, I really didn't notice that much of a difference between, let's say, using the R7 and the R10. It's fast focusing, it's accurate. I'm able to shoot at really low aperture settings and have no problem at all. Actually, you know what? I take that back because we were using a cheap lens that day. I haven't tried it on lower aperture settings. The lowest I think I went was about 4.5, but either way, I had no problem with that head face eye detection. I didn't use it on animals, but the camera has animal autofocus eye detection for animals. I think I said that a little crazy. Anyway, you can focus on animals. You can shoot up to 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter, but there is, get ready for this, no mechanical shutter, which I didn't actually notice too much, except for the fact that while I was taking pictures with the camera, I had to turn on the sound of that electronic shutter. It was funny, I, I remember changing that, but it didn't click that there was no mechanical shutter. All in all, it seems this camera was really made for video people who want to use a Canon full frame mirrorless camera because the video specs are really what the Canon R8 boasts. You can shoot in HDR PQ, Canon Log 3, and like I mentioned before, 4K up to 60 FPS, which is oversampled 6K. 
The camera has full HD up to 180 FPS. You can record 4K UHD or full HD video for up to two hours. That's definitely something that videographers are going to appreciate being able to shoot for that long instead of that 30 minute max that we've had on a lot of other cameras and being able to have that two hours all in one file, which how long it's taken me to record this video, I think I might need the two hours. Another video centric spec is that it does not have image stabilization for still mode just for video mode. Again, making this camera really friendly for videographers. You've got vertical movie mode and UVC live streaming, so you can live stream without having to go through something like Zoom or Microsoft Teams. You can just use your camera very easily to do so. A lot of the other specs that you're going to see in this camera are things that you see in a lot of other cameras, like being able to use Wi-Fi, having great autofocus system, and of course, all of the main functions that you can use, really fast shutter speeds, a large ISO range, and so much more. If you wanna read the whole spec sheet, make sure you hit the link in my description that's gonna take you to where you can review every single thing. But here's my take on this camera. Now, I did not shoot video with it at this point, I wish I did, but I only had a very limited amount of time, and truthfully, I'm a photographer, not a videographer, so I used it as a camera, taking still photos. And you know, it performed the way that I would expect it to perform. Very smooth autofocus, easy to use, the form factor is there, I knew where all the buttons were and I was able to use it without any learning curve at all. If you're a Canon user that is used to the form factor of the mirrorless camera lineup or even something like the 5D Mark III or Mark IV, you're gonna have an easy transition to this camera. However, I probably would not recommend this camera if you are shooting stills. I think maybe the R7, the R6, or the R6 Mark II, depending on your budget, might be a better choice if you are primarily a photographer. But if you're primarily a videographer, this is an excellent solution to your needs at a lower price point than let's say the R5C. So let me know your thoughts about this camera. Let me know the things that it touch on that maybe you want others to know down in the comments. Let me know what you think of the files and the photos that I took, but be nice, be nice, and I'll see you next time.